Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series of videos, we're helping you guys prepare for the Texas EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. In the series right now, we're focusing on science. More specifically, in this episode, we're focusing on reproduction coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen and you'd like to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this YouTube card here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes in the order they were taught and by topic, so you can drill down to what is most important to you. Now, if you cannot see the YouTube card I just pointed to because your browser doesn't support YouTube cards, you can check the description below in this video. I will have it linked there as well. I'll also have additional resources such as the Big Yellow Book. I highly recommend this in most all my videos. It is a resource that uh, people that pass the exam the first or second time are using. In fact, I use it all the time to help produce these videos in regard to content and the flow of material. It's not the only resource I use, but it is one I use quite regularly. So check that out below. Now before we uh, get started with the lesson today, I want to give a quick shout out to Alexandria Marquez. Uh, she actually commented a few weeks ago on one of my videos that she was using them to prepare for her exam. And most recently her comment uh, stated that she passed her science exam and she was giving me a shout out for that. So thank you Alexandria. I appreciate you giving me some credit for that, but really it's all you. Um, thank you for knowing your material. But you left me an open question. I'm just curious. I hope you passed all of your subject areas and that you've got that behind you now. If not, just know that I will be producing math videos after science. And uh, don't give up. I, I hope you passed everything. But if you're still working on it, I, I wish you all the luck going forward and, and retaking if that's what needs to be done. Um, okay, so if this is the first reproduction video you've seen, you need to go check out my previous one because this is two parts. And this is the second of two parts. So go back and check out the first one. I will link it right here. And again, if you didn't see what I'm pointing to right here, you can check the description. I'll have a link towards the top. And uh, you need to check out Reproduction 1, or Part 1, before you watch this one, which is Part 2. Okay? This That will make this video make a lot more sense to you. So please, please, please check that out first. Okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put five minutes on the clock. We're going to try to finish up in this round. And so let's go ahead and talk about uh, where we left off last time. Now in the last video we talked about plant reproduction and we talked about how there's two major categories, seed bearing and non-seed bearing. We did not get to seed bearing or non-seed bearing. So let's talk about that now. So first of all, non-seed bearing plants would be your ferns and mosses. That's a big category for those, okay? And they do not make seeds. You'll never find seeds in a, in a plant store for moss or ferns. What you're looking for are spores. They make spores just like mushrooms do, okay? And so, but mushrooms of course are a fungus, okay? So these plants, uh, mosses and ferns, they, they have a male and female plant that make different spores, the male side and the female side, so kind of like eggs and sperm. Now they can't get into contact in, with each other unless they have a moist environment, so it kind of needs to rain, kind of make a puddle where they're around, and then those spores will kind of combine in that process, and they will fertilize one another, okay? Now the difference between the moss and the fern is the moss spores will develop a spore stalk on the female plant and once it, it gets all developed and ready to go, it will shoot out uh, spores that are germinated, basically zygotes. A zygote is a fertilized egg, and those zygotes will land and regrow into new moss plants, okay? Usually in clusters right around the ones they came from. On the ferns, on the other hand, they don't create a spore stalk. Once they get together in water and they fertilize one another, then those will actually uh, develop into new fern plants. So remember, zygotes are fertilized eggs. We call these spores uh, zygotes when they fertilize and they develop into new plants, okay? Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is asexual reproduction. Now, asexual means that there are no female and males uh, that are creating the process. It's simply that uh, one organism creates an offspring of itself. Now, we see this in plants with strawberries. We see it with airplane plants that are household plants we see a lot of times, and even potatoes, okay? Now, asexual... Um, can also be animals. Uh, a lot of microscopic animals reproduce asexually. A lot of bacteria, uh, things like paramecium and protozoans, um, they will uh, reproduce asexually. And it means that they divide. So one cell divides into two daughter cells and they will grow into more developed mature cells that are identical to the parent they came from. But of course, since they divided, there's no parent any longer, okay? Now there are more uh, other species such as uh, multicellular organisms, such as flatworms that can do this. Um, there's other ones that can do it too. Um, the California um, blackworm can reproduce asexually, and even copperhead snakes. Now copperhead snakes are very unusual. You, you ought to check those out. Uh, they have male and female reproductive glands, 
and they can fertilize themselves in the absence of males, but even some female copperhead snakes will even reproduce asexually even when males are around to help procreate with, okay? So kind of unusual. Another kind of asexual reproduction would be like uh, cloning. We see this a lot with plants. There's a lot of uh, plant cloning that goes on. But we had Dolly the sheep uh, several years ago, and she's the first cloned animal. And they took uh, cells from her udder, and they basically developed sperm and egg and a fertilized cell and re-implant Im implemented that into her uterus. And she gave birth to her own twin, which was identical in every way to her. It was just a newborn from the parent, which is asexual. But it took a science scientist and to do all that. Now, some people are even talking about human cloning, which I think kind of crosses the boundaries of ethics and morals and things, but you be the judge of that one, okay? Okay, so let's talk about sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction deals with sperm and eggs, and then once they fertilize the egg, when the sperm, uh, the male sperm uh, gets in contact with the egg and it fertilizes it, then that becomes a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. That fertilized egg develops into the embryo, which eventually becomes the offspring, okay? Now, um... The sperm and egg have half of the chromosomes of the parent organism. So, for example, humans have 46 chromosomes. So, when uh, they go through the process of mitosis and meiosis to develop sex cells, 23 uh, chromosomes go into each egg and 23 chromosomes go into each sperm. And when they get in contact, they end up with 46. Okay? Now, real quickly, I made a video just before this one called Understanding uh, Punnett Squares. I can't stress you enough, you need to watch this video. I'm going to point to it right here, this card right here. It's also going to be in the description, Understanding Punnett Squares. I made that video specifically for you guys out there because I can almost guarantee you 90% guarantee you're going to have to understand how to use a Punnett Square on your exam. It takes about 16 minutes to go through that video. There's no way I was going to just do that in 5 minutes. So please, please, I can't stress to you how important it is to watch that video. Now understand that um, chromosomes are what carries the traits of organisms and also it's what's passed on to offspring, okay? Now chromosomes are found on the DNA, or it's part of the DNA, or the DNA, I guess you could say, in all of our cells. Uh, and you will know more about that by watching that Punnett Square video. I'm going to keep going, guys, because we're going to finish this up right here. Okay, so chromosomes carry the genetic material that pass on traits to offspring, and they are in each part, there's different segments of those chromosomes that are called genes, you hear about you pass your genes on to your kids or whatever. And so genes are going to code for certain traits, whether it's eye color, height, metabolism, um, hair color, uh, waviness of hair, uh, race, uh, ethnics, all that kind of stuff. And there's going to be dominant and recessive traits, again, in my Punnett Square video. Dominant is going to show up more frequently. Recessive is going to show up least, least frequently. And it's because of the coding that happens through the process of reproduction. Okay? It'll make a lot more sense if you watch the Punnett Square video. Okay, also, through, uh, through the passing on of traits and through the passing on of things to offspring, we have things that go on with that offspring, either inherited traits, instincts, and behaviors. Now, inherited, inherited things would be like eye color, height, weight, metabolism, things you have zero control over. It's just how you're born and the things that you have, blood type, all those things are inherited. Now, instinct is what an organism naturally knows to do when they're born such as little ducklings, naturally know how to swim. They can run right to the water when they're hatched and they are swimming immediately. They don't need to be taught that. A lot of birds already know they need to build a nest. They just haven't been taught what kind of nest to make. And so uh, wasps, they're born knowing how to make their nest. And so um, it's instinct. A cheetah knows how to hunt. It knows its prey. It knows how to be. But it's going to be taught how to hunt those things, okay? So those are learned behaviors. Learned behaviors come from the parent organism or its surroundings and environment where it learns how to do the things it learns how to do, okay? All right, man, reproduction was a lot to cover, guys. I know it was, I know we went over five minutes. We actually had five minutes in the last video. So well over 10 minutes of material. And if you add the Punnett Square again, a plug for the Punnett Square, please watch that. Um, you're gonna need to know it. There's 16 minutes just right there in lessons. A lot of stuff covering this detail and stuff, okay? All right, we'll have two more videos to go, I know for sure, for science. And uh, then we'll wrap that up and we'll head into math. If you like these videos, show your support by giving me a thumbs up. Also, uh, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell that lets you know when new videos uh, are posted. And again, share these with your friends, give these to your colleagues, professors, other people in college that you're dealing with in education. And maybe you're advancing or looking at a different area of education and you're currently in the school environment. Share this with other people that are getting ready for this EC6 exam. I would appreciate that. Thanks again for watching. Please be sure to make a comment below. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.